Hey friends! Welcome back to my channel. It is me, Alana. For this video, I am going to be talking about all the books I read in January. So in the month of January, I read and completed four books and I DNF'd one book. So uh, the first book that I finished was The Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. So I gave this four stars. I wasn't sure what to expect when starting this book and I actually was very nervous because I wasn't sure if I was going to enjoy it like everybody else had. But I was surprised because the storyline wasn't what I was expecting it to be. And so I think because it wasn't like what I expected, I enjoyed it a lot more. So um, it follows a girl who is a journalist and in their world there's like a war going on between two gods and so her job as a reporter is to report on this war so as she's going to work every day um she has a rival at the same newspaper and so both of them compete for jobs because they start at the same time they kind of even though she's like poorer than he is she has just as much sway as he does um just because she is really good a really good writer and he is too despite the fact that he does ha like have familial power as well so halfway through the story um she her brother is off fighting in this war and she loses contact with him so she decides to join the like war front journalists that go out like into the war so she like decides to go out there and start reporting on the war and to find her brother and her rival ends up being there as well and i'm just gonna leave it at that because i don't want to spoil it so yeah but it's really really good i'm really actually looking forward to picking up the sequel to see what happens next because the first book kind of ended on like an interesting note that i again wasn't expecting to happen so um but yeah i was really invested i enjoyed the romance it's very much slow burn so like don't expect anything to really happen until maybe the last quarter of the book but it was very slow, born, slow burn, but I, like, enjoyed that. I normally, like, get a little frustrated with slow, bo slow burn because after a while, I'm like, you gotta see these feelings. Please do something because I see them and I'm tired of watching this and y'all not knowing anything. That was a lot. But <laughs> I actually enjoyed the pacing of the story. It, like, fit the timing and it fit what was going on. Like, if the romance had started any sooner, it would have been weird. So I enjoyed that it just had a really good pacing and then I enjoyed the fact that it wasn't just about the romance it was about the world too so you were you were getting a lot about the war and about um the gods that were fighting and the different stories behind them so I really enjoyed the fact that you were getting this like mythological aspect as well not that you probably need my recommendation because everybody's loved this book but in case you needed a, another voice to be like it's good it's good so um Pray for me though, because so I got the fairy loot edition of the book Divine Rivals, and so last summer I was getting rid of some books because I was moving, and so I unhauled a lot. I remember because at the time I just was not thinking, and I just was like, I don't know if I'm gonna like this book. I put my copy of the Divine Rivals in my unhaul pile, but. There was a moment where I went back and I like sifted through the pile and I took some books out that I was like, you know what, I'm gonna actually like take these back and like m let them move with me because I might actually enjoy these. Please play that I, please, please, please keep me in your thoughts and prayers that I actually took that book out because if I didn't and then that book just like ended up going somewhere else, I'm gonna be mad because that book was actually beautiful and I didn't know what I had until it was gone, so. Let's hope that past Lana was smart and didn't make a dumb decision. So, I know this is first world problems, but they're my first world problems right at the moment. So, okay. So, I then read A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. So, I gave this one three stars. So, I read this and I read Divine Rivals around the same time. And I actually have a vlog coming out, or that has come out, um... Reading, where I was reading both of these books and I 
liked Divine Rivals a little bit more. The vibes are very similar, if that makes sense. Like a girl leaving home, doing something big where it, when everybody else is underestimating them, there's a sense of mythology in both. It's different, but it's similar. So, yeah. But um, this one follows a girl who, she currently lives in a, like a, there's also a, there's also a war going on between, like, not gods, but two different, like, ethnic groups, almost, it is what it seems like. It wasn't really explained super, or I didn't really get it super well, but I just know it was, like, one group and another group going at it into war. So, each group has their own mythologies, all this kind of stuff. So, this girl is going to college, and at the college, women are only allowed to study architecture. They're not allowed to study literature. So, she likes literature um so she had to settle for studying for architecture and then just like studying literature on her own so she has a little bit of trauma going on because her mother is abusive and like emotionally abusive and kind of yeah emotionally abusive and then um also she was sexually harassed by a professor and so she's dealing with that as well. And so she's just kind of lost. She doesn't really know what to do next with her life. And she's just very unhappy. So there's a competition for this estate of this author that she loves. And the competition is for anyone in architecture who can, like, redo his house or something like that. So she wins and she goes out there. And while she's out there, there's another literature student there who is um, trying to basically write like the biography or like study the writings of this writer and so they kind of grow close because they're both like taking interest in these writings and whether or not like this author was truly great or not um and along the way there's also some mythological aspects because she can see these stories and I it's, it's still confusing to me because I couldn't tell if she was actually seeing the things that she was seeing or if it was still like a trick of the mind. It, it's never really explained in this book. So, yeah. Um, but anyways, so I thought it was very atmospheric. Definitely atmospheric. The world building was confusing sometimes. So, like, when it came down to the mythologies and the war and stuff, it was a little bit confusing to me trying to cipher through because it just some portions I didn't think were really explained clearly enough for me so that's why it was a little like even now I'm still kind of confused about certain things that happened um but I think overall it was a good story um just seeing her kind of find her confidence and her strength to stand up for herself is amazing and to get out of this like shell because she all she's always had people telling her who she is and who she should be especially men and so it's it was interesting seeing her break out of that shell and decide for herself who she wants to be and what she wants to do so i like enjoyed that for the most part and i thought the romance was pretty cute and interesting to un to watch and unfold and everything like that um but again the mythology i think the reason why i only gave it three stars was just because of the mythology because it wasn't super duper clear and even at the end it kind of weird like it it completes the, the story is complete but it ends on like an interesting note where you're still left with this wondering of like was everything she saw real or was it not real it's never really answered so i'm a completionist kind of person so i need you to just tell me if it was real or not but that's okay, this author's not bad. So, I don't know. If anybody, like, understood that ending, please let me know. Because I still don't understand. So, the book I DNF'd was The Hurricane Wars by Thea Gonzen, Guanzen. Um, I'm not gonna lie. I started this, it was a little weird, but I was, like, going with it. And then I just, like, had a moment where I was like, let me look at the reviews a little bit because I just don't know and then someone told me this was actually a Raylo fanfic almost retelling and after that I couldn't not see it and so I just DNF'd it because I'm tired of Raylo fanfics I'm so sorry like I'm just tired of Star Wars fanfics in general but 
And I just didn't, like, I wasn't invested in the story either. I think I got, like, five chapters in, and it just was not hitting. I didn't really care about the characters. I didn't understand why certain things were happening. But yeah, it was just not for me. So, um, the next book that I finished was The Enchanted Hacienda by J.C. Cervantes. So, I really enjoyed this, and I'm actually going to try and read some of her middle grade stories, because I think this is maybe one of her first adult fictions and then she might the rest are like middle grade I think don't quote me on that but uh I give this five stars I really loved it I loved the vibes of this story I liked the characters I liked the romance it was just fun it was cute it was I don't know so I will preface and say this this gives Encanto vibes but it's a story on its own if that makes sense so like let me explain the storyline and I'll tell you where the Canto vibes come in so it's about a girl who comes from a family in Mexico that owns a magical flower farm so this is where the like Encanto vibes come in because um the magic I think the magic runs through the women's lines so her her cousins and her sisters and then her mom and her aunt they're all really close so it, that's where it gives the Encanto vibes it's like the familial connection and the familial closeness that like everybody loved in Encanto is in here but the story does hold its own where um she lives in New York right now she's not really happy with her life she kind of only went this path because it's what she thought everybody wanted her to do or what was expected of her to do um but then she realizes she's unhappy and so she moves back home to this flower farm and there she decides to start writing a book and um she runs into an old family friend and starts to fall for him and it's like a whole romance and everything like that but um the other thing and i guess this is also part of the encanto vibes is that everybody in the family has a magical ability um except her or so we think, because of um, the the goddess's power within the land that they're on and everything like that. I really love the storyline. I loved the romance. Um, I thought it was just so, like, cute and, like, refreshing almost. And I really did love the closeness that she shares with her family. Um, her mom and her aunt and then her sisters and her cousins. I thought they were all cute. They were all so intentional the way they would just drop everything for each other and I just really enjoyed that part of the story. But then I just thought the the pacing of the story was really well done and if I could read this again, I would. Like with a refreshed mind, like a clean slate and just enjoy it again, I would because it was just so good to me. And I highly recommend this. I will say though too, so the author has an opportunity to make this like a companion series almost. Because she could totally make a book from each cousin's point of view in this. Even the aunt. Um, and I think that would be fun, like a fun choice for her to make if she were to. Because I would totally pick up all of those books. The last book I read in January was And Then There Were None. So originally I had um, Castles in Their Bones as my buzzword pick because it was there, there, and there. Um, but I decided to DNF this because I just wasn't really into it. I might try and go back to it later. But for now, it's a DNF. But I did pick up And Then There Were None instead and I gave this four stars. I was definitely intrigued by the story, y'all. So I got the Christie... So I read Murder on the Orient Express and I actually really enjoyed it. I gave that five stars, I believe, four or five stars. And I thought that was really good. And then I read the ABC Murders and I was not, wasn't really into it. So I wasn't sure what I was going to think with this one because at, at, at that point I had one five star, like four or five star, and then one like three star. One I enjoyed and one I was like, it's meh. But then I got, and then there were none, and I got super duper into it because I was like, who was killing all these people? Who was the killer? Everybody's dead. What's going on? So, I, <laughs> I was invested. And then we got to the end, and I was like, bruh, I did not get, like, I kind of had an inkling that this was the killer. But at the same time, I was still suspecting everybody else first before I got to this person. They were kind of my last, uh, last pick. But, uh, and then there are none is about these like 10-ish, I think it's 10 people that get invited to this island for whatever reason 
and on the island they think that like they're being um hosted for like some money or something like that and when they get there they realize that they're stuck and they don't know why they don't know why they've been invited to this island they don't know why they've been stuck here like literally stranded everybody who was there was intentionally brought there all that kind of stuff and then everybody starts dying one by one Every, every night the killer kills somebody off and you just don't know why and you're just like sitting there in a panic because they're just like who is killing and so literally everybody's panicking now because they're like they don't know why they were invited they don't know why everybody's dying and now they gotta figure it out and looking back once I found out who the killer was I was like you know what it makes sense why this person is the killer but the whole time I was like, who is offing these people? Even at the end, when like I thought it was the end, end, I was like, I still don't know who the killer is. Like, everybody's dead. But then you find out. It's a wild time. It's a totally wild time, y'all. Check it out, please. Please and thank you. I see why I see why everybody loves Agatha Christie, because that was that was a banger. I was, it was I was into it. <laughs> so um, that was a great time, and I'm glad I got my buzzword pick out of the way, and if there's ever an, and then, if you guys know of any, and then there are none inspired stories, movies, whatever, let me know, because I will watch it, because this had me intrigued, I was invested again. So, those are all the books I've read in January, um, if you like the video, like it down below, let me know what you guys have read in January, what you enjoyed, what your best book was, what your worst book was whatever you want. Uh, if you're not going to comment, I'm going to go ahead and say leave me an emoji down below. And if you want to see more videos of me, hit that subscribe button. You guys are all civilized and wonderful weeks.